G'day everyone. Thought I'd have a bit of a different discussion with you today because I've been hearing this term a little bit lately and I thought I'd have a talk to you guys about it and see what you think about uh, this thing called computational photography and it may be the future and I've thought about a couple of interesting things about it. Now I know a lot of people are going to say that iPhones or whatever are never going to take over the market but they certainly have taken over one segment of the market and that's the point and shoot uh, segment. Now where do you actually see anyone going out nowadays with point and shoot cameras? You very rarely see it. Now I do have the RX V1 uh, Mark V and I love using that camera but that's because I am a photographer and I'm a, I'm a bit of a geek and I love the technology but if you go around now like if you're on holidays or if you're just traveling into the city or whatever you're going to do you very rarely ever see point and shoots anymore it's nearly everyone has got their uh, camera their phones on them because the cameras on those phones nowadays are really really good and one of the things that they're doing in these cameras now, or the phones I should say, is they've pushed the sensors really as far as they can go. I mean obviously there are going to be improvements, but they really have pushed them as far as they can go with massive jumps. And what they're doing, they're using this thing called computational photography to actually give you extra features. Now why, what that means is, if you look at how the iPhones can refocus afterwards, they can do things like that. They're using HDR in camera where they're taking multiple shots in one go. These are all things that are basically using computational photography. And they're real advancements in what the iPhones and the uh, Samsungs or whatever can do. Uh, I mean, just have a look at these images uh, through that I've taken with the iPhone. Now, I'm not saying they'll replace a digital SLR, but they actually are really, really good. Now, these were in very high contrasty situations, and the camera has been shooting HDR, and it's been able to basically get the sky and also the background in one shot. Well, when I say one shot, it's grab multiple shots and then put those shots together and you only see one shot. You can later on go in and actually change the uh, aperture if you're doing in portrait as well. And when you're looking at portrait photography, it does blur that background out as well. And it gives you a really nice result. Now, it's not always perfect, but it is getting better and better as technology goes on. Now, what I'd like to say to you is, what, what would happen if this was uh, incorporated into a digital SLR? But before we look at that, I'll just show you this article. I'm going to put this link down below so you can have a look if you're curious about what computational photography is. Uh, and you can see a lot of it is related basically to the iPhone or, or Samsung phones, talking about how you can change the lighting on the uh, image uh, in the actual phone after it's been taken and things like that. I mean, it really is amazing technology. High dynamic range is a real example of where this is being used. Um, like I said, I'm not going to talk about this whole thing, but the light field camera was using it and things like that. Some have been successful, uh, some actually haven't been. This L16, for instance, was going to be a big thing and it's never eventuated. So there are some really interesting things uh, that could come out. 3D features are going to be coming out apparently um, through Google, artificial intelligence and things like that. So have a read of this article anyway um, that, like I said, I've listed down below. But what I wanted to talk to you about uh, it may end up being put into, say, digital SLRs, because at the moment you can take, uh, say, HDR, but it's it's not very good in the implementation of it. You basically then have to take it into Lightroom and do things like that and manipulate it. But what if it was starting to work like the phone does, where it's taking multiple images and then blending them all in together? Uh, these are things that may end up coming. Imagine the quality if you could get this type of technology into a digital SLR or, or a mirrorless, obviously, and the things that you could actually do. Now, I do think eventually it's going to come. I know a lot of you out there are going to have blinkers on again and think, well, this is no good for photography. You still have to be an artist, remember, but it is going to give you uh, some form of a bit more arsenal uh, in your camera that you'd be able to do amazing things, particularly if you're dealing with things like, hey, HDR where you want to capture that full gradient of the sky and someone in the foreground and things like that. Uh, you know, a bride, you didn't want to blow out the bride's wedding dress, but you still wanted to capture that beautiful sky. 
and these things shortly may be able to be done directly in camera. Like I said, I do think it's only a matter of time before we have screens like what the iPhone has on the back of the camera, and again, that's only gonna help with this, uh, and I think this is probably gonna be the future. Uh, let me know in the comments box down below whether you think this is a possibility, or whether you think that I'm just basically uh, shooting off steam and you don't think it's actually gonna happen. I'd love to know. I do think this is gonna happen, and I think it's basically uh, gonna happen sooner than what you think. Uh, that's all for now, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now, guys.